Why did God save us in the first place? Well, God saved us. God redeemed us in Christ to proclaim His excellencies. If you have been saved by Jesus, it's so that you would with your mouth, with your mouth, that's what the word proclaim means. It doesn't mean speak the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. Peter would go, it's going to be thumbs down for me. He would say, that doesn't make sense. You have to open your mouth. And that's why God has saved you. Look again at what he says. After those four things, chosen race, royal priesthood, holy nation, a people for his own possession. Why? That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light. This is talking not primarily about evangelism, though I think that's included, that's implied. This is talking about worship. so that we may open our mouths and proclaim the excellencies of Jesus who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is why you exist. You exist for God, to know Father, Son, and Spirit intimately, to be reconciled to God through the work of Jesus, so that you would worship him you would use your breath to exclaim, to exult in the glories of God. As Peter says, His excellencies. So that we would proclaim. Excellencies means the, His virtue, His purity, His qualities, His superiority, His brilliance, His value. That's why you've been saved. How do we live in the world? as worshipers, ascribing glory, praise, honor, excellencies to whom they are due. That includes evangelism. And by evangelism, I mean telling individuals the gospel. Telling other people the gospel is, should be an act of worship. That what we're doing when we tell people the good news is not just checking off, well, Jesus said, go and make disciples. Well, he did, and we should do it just out of a sense of duty. But it should go much further than that, and it should be seen as an act of worship that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light so that we would proclaim his excellencies to other people and we would worship him with our mouths. When you tell someone else the gospel, you should be talking about the excellencies of Jesus. How excellent, how virtuous, how precious, how brilliant he is. And calling them, exhorting them, as Peter does, urging them to turn from their sin and embrace Jesus through faith. That's an act of worship. How are Christians to live in this world? Friends, you and I must remember who we are. We must remember who we were. And we must remember why God saved us in the first place. To be holy and happy, to reveal His glory through us, and so that we would worship Him.